So, the first question that you're probably wondering is, didn't I already make a video on this subject? The answer is yes. Um, but, after I uploaded it, I got some comments saying that at the end, the sound cut off. So, I'm having to remake the video! Yeah, um, anyway, sorry, I'm like, boy. Um, so I'm remaking this video. And this video, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, is on techno-paganism. Now, most people don't even know what techno-paganism is, so I'm going to tell you. Techno-paganism is paganism except technology-centered. <laughs> I guess you can define it as that, as in the name, tech, techno pagan. Techno pagans, um, I guess a lot of them are witches. I don't really know because there's not techno paganism isn't like a religion. It's not like Wicca that has a set like core beliefs. It doesn't, you know, Wiccans believe in the god and the goddess, and you know. The elements and all that jazz. Um, now I'm not saying every single Wiccan believes this, but Wicca itself is a religion that was started by Gerald Gardner. So, but techno-paganism is not that. No one person started it, no group started it. It wasn't started at a specific time in history it just kind of happened. And the reason that it happened is because of technology. Technology hasn't really been around for that long, well, little modern technology. And so techno-paganism didn't exist until this modern technology came into being. And that's how techno-paganism got started. And so these early techno-pagans, they knew. They were like, well, Technology is soon going to be at the center of everything that's going to connect people. The whole world is going to use it. And so we have to find a way to integrate this new technology into our pagan belief system. And that's what techno-paganism is. So the first subject, I guess, on techno-paganism would be, do techno-pagans believe in God? If they do, then how do they see God from a technological standpoint? First off, just like Wiccans, not all techno-pagans believe in God, or gods in the plural. Anyway, I just had to switch my webcam from my D1 to my old one that's built on my computer because my other one was acting funny. Anyway, I was talking about God. So, a lot of techno pagans see God as um, the universal algorithm. For my brain to understand God in Um, I like to use the term Deus Ex Machina. Now, for those of you who know what that is, I am asking you not to take it in the way that, you know, is traditionally used as a literary device, because that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the literal translation of Deus Ex Machina, which is God from the machine, or God in the so, God from the machine is how I think of God in a technological sense, um, which brings me to cyberspace. Cyberspace is, you know, where cyber technological things happen. When you go on your computer and you access internet or just your files on your computer or your game, 
you're in cyberspace. Okay. Which is just the space where these technological functions happen. Techno pagans see cyberspace as a part of the spiritual realm. It's the realm above ours. Um, like we're here and it's here. That doesn't mean literally above ours. It's around us. It's just not a different frequency. And so cyberspace is a part of that plane. At least technical pagans believe. Now a lot of people are probably like, well, how does that make sense? Because like you just said, technology, modern technology hasn't been around for internet hasn't been around for very long, computers, etc, etc. Well, the answer to that, in my techno-pagan view, would be that cyberspace has always existed. Okay? Even when you're not logged into it, it's still there. So, even before, you know, we had computers, we had cell phones, etc., cyberspace was still there. We just have a way to access it and tap into it um, until we invented things like computers and the internet and phones and all that jazz. So it was always there and we just had to tap into it. And techno pagans understand that. And so, in my view of God, God is in this cyberspace. And cyberspace doesn't just encompass technological things. In my mind, cyberspace can have everything in it. It is everything. It's everything that we don't see. This can be antimatter, dark matter, it can be the astral plane, it can be the internet, it can it's everything. Cyberspace is everything that is on a higher frequency than our mundane which is the world that we can see. Now, witches is called their magic, and I believe it's the exact same thing. Now, where techno pagans come in, we believe that things like computers, phones, things like that are machines, these things allow us tap into this cyberspace. Because for thousands and thousands of years, beginning of time, well, not the beginning of time, the beginning of modern day humans, we have tapped into this unseen world around us. We do this and still do by meditation. We do this by casting spells, which is just the manipulation of the natural energy of the world and of ourselves. Um, we've done this by consulting shamans who are intermediaries between the spirit world and ourselves. And I will get into more of that later. And so we've done it this way for millennia. Now, now that we have things like computers, that speak this technological, mathematical, cyberspace language a lot easier than we do, we use them as intermediaries to tap in to cyberspace. Now, without, you know, a computer screen, without, or not even that, without, you know, the hardware and the pieces and the microchips and, and all that jazz that's inside these machines, we can't tap into cyberspace. Now, we can tap into parts of it, but the parts that we see when we log on to our computers or use our phones is one part of cyberspace. And when we're not on these things, we're in another part of cyberspace. 
And until we invented computers and phones and the internet and things like that, we couldn't access this part of cyberspace that you're in right now, because you're watching this video, that I'm in right now, because I'm making this video. And so, Technopagans have understood that this is not a new phenomenon. We just didn't know how to access it. And it's always been there. And God isn't just in, you know, the natural world, the outdoors and ourselves, you know, molds, etc. God is also in technology. So this is what I mean by Dave's ex machina. Coming back to the beginning of the circle. If sorry if I'm like woo, going everywhere. So Deus Ex Machina is that. It's the God from the machine or God in the machine. It doesn't mean that I worship computers or think they're God or anything like that. What I worship is what these machines have in them, what they have inside of them, and what they allow us access to. Now, the second topic of this video is techno shamanism. Okay, so it's like techno paganism, except a little more advanced. Most people know what a shaman is. Like I said earlier, it is it's a person who is an intermediary between the spirit world and our mundane world. The spirit world. Uh, and they can tap into the spirit world better than say me. I'm not a psychic, you know. I can't need auras. I can't do any of probably could if I really, really practiced, but I don't. Okay, so they can, you know, tap into the unseen world. And techno shamans are the same. They know the language that machines speak in. And yes, machines do speak in a language. It's the language of coding mathematics and things of that nature, things that I don't know. <laughs> and so techno shamans can tap into this and communicate directly with this cyberspace um, just on their own. And they can understand machines, and they can understand what it is that they're doing, and yada yada yada. A good example would be like Bill Gates or Steve Jobs. Anybody, I guess they could be programmers, they could be hackers, anybody that understands this technological language, these technological functions, can be considered a techno shaman. Um, I'm not one, but I, that'd be cool if I was, but I'm not. So it's kind of hard to explain. So, the third topic would be tools. How do techno pagans express the, what they're doing in the unseen world? If that makes sense. Wiccans, or I should say witches who practice in a Wiccan way, would use a chalice for water. They would an athame to have a physical representation of the energy that they are sending out and manipulating. Would use a cauldron to, you know, burn incense, and incense is a tool, and oils are a tool, and candles are a tool. These are tools that, you know, are traditional within the community. Um, techno pagans have these tools as well. They're just a little bit different. They're kind of the same, just 
a little more modern, people could be, instead of having a physical book of shadows, techno pagans who have a book of shadows would have, say, a USB of shadows, if that makes sense. Everything that you would put in a book of shadows can simply be done on the computer and then put on a USB stick for storage. And so this could be my book of shadows. Or alternatively, you can use a disc and make a disc of shadows. So it's the same thing, it's just updated and modernized. Whereas with something digital, you can change it whenever you want to. So that's one thing that I like. Another thing that a lot of techno pagans use, and actually a lot of urban witches use who live in an urban area, is using their oven as a hearth. And so it's basically just taking tools that witches have used and still use today that you would associate with witchcraft and just updating them. Finding the technological modern equivalent of whichever tool you're talking about. Um, the next topic would be, sorry, I'm flashing these eyes, um, would be basically gatherings and celebrations in the Now, a lot of people, well, most people know what a rave is, and a lot of people don't agree with it, um, which is okay, I mean, whatever, I used to not agree with raving either. But then I started to understand the spiritual aspect of it. And this is the way that techno pagans see rape and participate in rape. Not, you have the mundane aspect of it where it's a party, and you're taking drugs, and dancing, and listening to but then, there's also the spiritual side of it, which is the deeper meaning. Now, things like dancing and music and psychedelic drugs and things like that have been used millennia. I mean, ever since humans first started walking and talking with each other and discovering the unseen world in nature. We have used dancing and music and psychedelic drugs to express our spirituality and to connect with it on a deeper subconscious level. Um, you can see that in modern day Wiccan Sabbath celebrations. Drumming, you see people dancing, um, they won't necessarily do drugs, but you know, they might because drugs have psychedelic drugs or, you know, things like that have been used for thousands of years to have a physical experience of the non-physical world, if that makes sense. Um, and so raves incorporate all of these things along with a sense of community. Because when you have a rave, you have people around you that are after the same things as you want to experience the same things as and are there for the same reason that you are. Or, you know, most of them are. I can't speak for everybody. And so techno pagans participate in rave to get this spiritual aspect. They could have a rave for a certain Sabbath. They could have it for a celebration. They could have it just as a coven gathering. And they use this hypnotic music to get into the mindset, their spiritual mindset that you might, that you enter when you're meditating or when you're dancing or things like that. Just the mindset above your normal everyday mind, if that makes sense. And you dance and it does the same thing. It's a physical way to get into that spiritual side of things. Um, and so raves in the techno-pagan community are just parties. 
they are a spiritual experience. And actually, a lot of people who aren't religious, who aren't techno pagan, express that as well. That they have experienced that spiritual side of things while at the rave. And it's very addicting. I mean, you have such a sense of community and you know that everything's connected, everything is part of this big worldwide web. And so raves kind of tap into that cyberspace and into that unseen higher astral plane. And so when you look at raving on that side, it is very, very positive. I mean, obviously, lots of negative, bad, bad things happen at raves, but that's just the risk that you take in your everyday life. So agree or disagree, it's up to you. Um, I don't really know what else to talk about, honestly. I think that's pretty much it basic of techno paganism. Um, it's basically, you know, any pagan tradition, techno pagans can believe in whatever gods they want, or God, they can not believe in God, they can be atheists, um, they could be witches, they might not be witches, they can be whatever it is, the same as normal neo pagan community, except that we incorporate technology and modernization in our practice. So instead of practicing in a way that, you know, a witch would have in 1800, <laughs> we practice in a way that a witch would in 2013. So it's simply an updated version of paganism, how that we know. Um, so yeah, I hope Informative. I'll put a few links down in the description box of places that you can read about techno paganism. And actually, there aren't a lot of things on the internet about techno paganism I have found, which is very, very interesting. Um, so that's why I'm making this video so more people can become aware of it. So I will put the link and find down there. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions or comments about what it is that I have just told you, that'd be great and you can leave them in the 